Hola y aloha, everyone, and welcome back to our show. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. I'm your host, Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, along with my lovely co-host, vice president and co-founder as well of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. We have a great show for you today, right, Marisol? We sure do. We are so excited. Today's episode, we are welcoming Latin musician, band leader, percussionist, son of Latin jazz royalty, Tito Puente Jr. Saludos, saludos, saludos. Hi, everybody. <laughs> ¿Cómo está, Marisol? Saludos, Bárbara. Muchas gracias por invitarme. Y gracias. Thank you guys for having me on the program today. Sí, estamos aquí con el Tito Puente Jr., el hijo del famosísimo Tito Puente, que es conocido como el rey del jazz latino. Bienvenidos. Gracias. Gracias, gracias, gracias por invitarme. Mucho gusto. So, um, Tito is coming to us today from Seattle. You just had a show there. Yes, I'm doing a concert here, a uh, residency at a place called Jazz Alley, where my father performed as well many times throughout his entire career. And uh, we're celebrating the 100th centennial of Tito Puente this entire year. So this is uh, one leg of the tour. And uh, I'm out ready to get out of the rain and head to Hawaii for some sun. <laughs> <laughs> We got plenty of it for you. <laughs> so Tito Puente Jr. is going to be joining us at the Hispanic Heritage Festival. It's a two-day event over at Oahu Veterans Center on West Oahu. And it's on Saturday and Sunday. He'll be performing Sunday, the 15th. And the event is from 12 to 7 on both days. It's uh, $10 per person, or you can get your tickets, $15 for both days. And I believe you're coming on to end the show, the grand finale on Sunday at 5 p.m. around that time, right? So make sure you guys are there. Barbara, I'm so excited. I'm muy feliz por, por, por esa oportunidad para todos ustedes que escuchando la música de Rey Timbatito Puente en celebración de, de centenario de mi padre. It's so cool that I can get to Hawaii and this leg of the tour and finally come back there. I haven't been there. I was talking to our very good friend who works for Alma Latina, Miss Nancy Ortiz. And she mentioned to me that I haven't been in Hawaii for over about 15 years now. Wow. So uh, it's been a, quite some time since I've been on the island. But I'm looking forward to celebrating uh, my father's legacy. The great music will be jamming with my buddy uh, Edwin Ortiz and his orchestra. Uh, there's food, games, food trucks, all kinds of stuff. Bring the family. Dile que el abuelo y abuela y los nene. Everybody can come. It's all ages. I want to get everybody to come on out and enjoy the music of Tito Puente as the younger generation, as they can continue and learn more about Celia Cruz, Tito Puente, Pano All-Stars, and our Hispanic culture. And not only that, we're also helping out our friends in Maui uh, with the fire relief. So I'm lo so looking forward to getting to Hawaii. I will be there on Sunday, but it is, it is a two-day festival, and I hope I can get everybody excited to join us on Sunday afternoon. I think I go on around maybe 4.35 p.m., but I will be coming a little bit earlier to meet my fans and friends. And I know there's a lot of people that haven't seen me in a long time and those who have maybe seen Tito Puente perform in Hawaii as well. I'd like to meet them too as well and uh, enjoy a wonderful afternoon and evening of just great Latin jazz music. Oh, it's gonna be great. Um, speaking of Celia Cruz, I was just in Miami and Celia Cruz and Tito Puente, you you guys have such an influence there in Miami. I, I saw the museum there, and um, how how talk to us about Celia, like how, something that we don't know. An amazing, uh, you know, I haven't gotten to the uh, the dis the exhibit yet, which just started the exhibit uh, in Miami for Celia Cruz. But today they just mm -hmm. um, uh, named a street after Celia Cruz on Miami Beach. Uh, I couldn't attend, of course, because I'm here in Seattle, but. Uh, very, very cool. And not only that, but they're also going to represent uh, Celia on the United States quarter in 2024. The first Afro-Cuban Latina on a uh, United States, like uh, from the United States mint to our hands. And it's going to be amazing to see that that woman uh, be honored in that aspect with on the United States quarter in 2024. They also just made a Barbie doll of Celia Cruz as well, which is incredible. Um, and she was just a wonderful human being. Um, she's practically my godmother. I grew up being around my father and Celia Cruz traveling the planet, seeing the impact that Afro-Cuban music has made around the world, including Hawaii. I remember being in, with Celia and my father in Hawaii back in the early 90s, 
and them performing uh, at a big festival over there. I believe it was at the Blaisdell Arena. Oh. And it was a wonderful concert. And I didn't, I couldn't believe how many people loved and came out to see uh, those great icons and those legends. But Celia will forever be remembered as the queen of Latin music. And we will remember her throughout uh, this whole entire Centennial concert. During the show, I do uh, touch on Celia's life and her legacy because she was so instrumental and important to my father's career. Your father lived a really full life. I mean, he lived in his late seventies, right? He was born in New York. Can you, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like growing up in a, in a, in a life with, you know, a, a father like that. What was it, how did he get started or what was it like for you growing up in, in that type of a household, even in your, your younger years? Or when did it really begin when you started to see, hey, this is something a little different than <laughs> my neighbor kids, maybe your friends? Mira, Marisol, increíble. Uh, cuando estoy allá en Nueva York, when we were, we were born and raised in New York City, my sister and I, um, being in the house, there was always a lot of music in our home. My dad played with the radio and he had cassettes. He didn't have a cell phone because back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, he didn't care for having the cell phone. So he didn't want to beep her cell phone. He used to, he used to uh, say, if they want to get in touch with me, they'll call back, you know? And a lot of celebrities came over the house and called our home and and traveling with him was really something special for me. Um, I hope I can maybe in the future write a book of my experience of being his son and what a, what a great experience it was to, uh, to know how much impact that he made to all Latinos. We, everybody kind of looks at Tito Puente as the Mambo Pope or like your tío. Like Tito Puente is my tío, you know? And he, his music always uh, resonated throughout your home with your parents playing his music and yourself. And, and you can turn on Alexa and tell Alexa to play Tito Puente music. And she'll love playing hundreds and hundreds of songs by El Rey de Timbal. But growing up uh, being his son was a really incredible experience for me. I will always cherish it. And uh, now it's my turn to bridge uh, the new generation with my father's generation. The last name Puente means bridge in Spanish. And that's what I've been doing for the past 23 years since his passing. And I'm trying to bridge the new generation, the kids that never got to see Tito Puente alive when he was with us here on the planet. They only get to see him on YouTube. Um, the experience of hearing the music live. And yeah, I kind of look like him without the white hair, but I kind of want everybody to experience his, his compositions, his arrangements, and his beautiful, incredible, illustrious career throughout this entire Centennial Tour and beyond. Yes. Speaking of our younger generation, our Latino generation is just, you know, uh, driving this economy. I was just in Miami at Latitude. And, uh, you know, we, we learned that at one in five Americans are Latino and our, our younger generation, like the medium age of the Latino Hispanic is 25 to 30 years old. So we have the next 30 years to grow. And, and it's so exciting that they're, you know, influencing the um, entertainment industry, the fashion industry, the sports industry. We're driving this economy, buying homes, graduating at higher rates pumping $3.2 trillion into the economy. It's exciting. So we do have a younger generation coming up that's that's going to learn about your music and, and the Latino influence. Like, it, it's it's really hot right now. We're hot, right? We've always been hot. You know that, Barbara and Marisol, we've always been with the, the hip thing. Everybody wants to be Latino. And everybody wants that sabor, sabor and that goya, you know, that mm -hmm. sazón that we got. And it's because we love our culture that much. We love being Hispanic. We love our food, our culture, our entertainment, our sports figures, our actors, our actresses. My God, we we go, we pump so much money into the, the movie industry and the television industry. We love seeing more Latinos, people of color, um, you know, on movies and television as well. And God, we can, we can go on and even till maybe one day we'll have a nice, beautiful Hispanic president of this country. And that's really ultimately what we are heading towards with having the Latin X, the younger generation, they are really like driving everything. I went to a concert. Well, I didn't go to the concert, but I had a show in Puerto Rico last weekend. And yes. I was to Barbara earlier, there was, there was a young reggaeton guy, 18, 17 years old. I didn't even remember his name. He packed an 18,000 seat wow. stadium in Puerto Rico. I, my mouth dropped. And I said, I, I never heard of him before. And he's not, he doesn't have any radio play. That's the other thing. These kids are driving it through social media and right. they are pumping into this economy like wouldn't believe. And that brings a lot of people to the island. It brings a lot of people. Um, it's a big platform for any Hispanic artist in the music world. 
And it's really incredible to see how the Latinx community, the influencers, social media influencers, and things like Latitude, where you went, uh, those conferences are really shining a light on the power of Hispanic and our, and our dollar. So Tito, I have a question for you, actually. Um, you said something about like those, I don't even know, like these young artists, yeah, with the reggaeton and they pack it in and like, this is where the kids are at. How do you find any maybe challenges or what are you doing, you know, you and your orchestra, what are you guys doing to really get in front of these younger people that might have just the reggaeton, reggae, or I mean, you know, rap stuff going on when our music is amazing and really trying to stay at the forefront of that and, and, and not lose it. Right. So, you know, are you touring? Are you, how are you getting in front of people? How are you? Yeah. What is it that you're doing to, to inspire these younger people? So maybe they can <laughs> uh, not get so caught up in just the reggaeton because this is soulful, right? It's soulful and there's so much history in this type of music. And I feel like some of that gets lost with all this new stuff, you know? Yeah. I hear exactly what you're saying, but I got to tell you, most of the concerts that I have been doing, I've been all sold out, full standing ovations. People enjoy Afro-Cuban music. And let's start from the top. The, the biggest artist in the world today is a gentleman named Benito, a.k.a. Bad Bunny. And Bad Bunny has always shown the ultimate respect to the pioneers and the icons and the legends like Celia, Tito Puente, Hector Lavoe, Fania All-Stars. So that, to me, shows that our brand of salsa, if you will, uh, has resonated with the younger people because young, these young kids who are listening to Bad Bunny or Daddy Yankee or Evie Queen or some of these new and incredible recording artists, well, they have been around for so many years. They all have shown respect to those elders men and elders women that came before them. And to me, that that's incredible. So maybe one day I can do a duet with Bad Bunny <laughs> and do a, you know, maybe a, a feature or collaboration. So I encourage um, the, the reggaeton world to continue to make the music that they're doing. It is as it is Latin music. Right. Uh, you could paste it and do it any other way. You want to call it reggae music? I'm going to stick with the Latin, Latin term that it is reggaeton and it is dembo. It is trap music. It is amazing music and kids love it. And I love going to perform somewhere, whether it be a nightclub or performing arts center where I'll have young people in the audience and I'll mention Bad Bunny and Daddy Yankee and Mark Anthony and Jennifer Lopez. And I'll mention these newer generational artists and people kind of respond to it in a, in a very positive way where I tell them that most of those artists show the, the respect to the eldersmen like Tito Puente, Machito, Tito Rodriguez, all those great, that greats that came before them. I love the way Latin music is going. And I can tell you, honestly, um, the radio in, in the world today, or especially in the United States, yes, they do play a lot of more reggaeton, but I know when you go to a club or dance hall or anything like that, people do want to hear that mix. I want to hear a song by Bad Money, but I also want to hear Mark Anthony, and I want to hear, a, you know, a Cheyenne song. I want to hear a salsa. You know, I want to hear Celia Cruz. And it's nice to see that the younger generation are starting to learn how to dance salsa, learn about Afro-Cuban music. And we're going to do that this Sunday. I'm going to do, it's going to be a Mambo 101 class. I'm going to teach everybody in Hawaii about salsa and Mambo music. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I love how we support each other. I mean, every generation. I was at Latitude, as you know, with over 6,000 Latino leaders, and entrepreneurs, and the, the gala um, honored uh, your song, Oye Como Va. And Sheila E. and Gloria and Emilio Esteban, they all got up there and performed it and gave you guys a, a credit. And it was it was beautiful. I love that. that. And I love Sheila. She's on my latest album, The King and I. She is the queen of percussion, hands down. I have nobody can dethrone her right now because she is one of the top drummer, female drummers in the world today. Gloria, of course, we, what can we say about our, our, our wonderful pop queen, Gloria Stefan, who is paved the way for all the Latino artists that we see today um, in pop, in the dance and pop world. And Gloria is just a, a staple. Her and her husband, Emilio, are just wonderful people. And it's nice to see that, 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 that they give recognition to Tito Puente and Celia Cruz as well. I, I see you've been traveling across the United States. You're like on the 100th, I don't know, 100th tour or, or location. Um, yeah. I, I, I was looking at your social media. I saw that you performed at the 36th annual Hispanic Heritage Awards. How was, where was that? How was that? Uh, that was recently, uh, about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. I can't, I've been everywhere. I'm sorry. I can't really recall, but yes. And it will re-air as a matter of fact, 
um, this weekend on okay. your local PBS station. It'll be October 14th and 15th, and then the 22nd and the 25th. So they are repeating the, the, the show if anybody missed it. Or you can go to pbs.org and just type in 36 Annual Hispanic Heritage Awards and see the whole entire show. Uh, they wanted to honor Centennial, uh, honor my late father. So we did a version of Oye Como Va with Mili Quesada, Pedrito Martinez, and uh, Alex Cuba. Uh, the show consisted of an array of different, different uh, styles of music. They honored Cafe Tacuba, which is a wonderful Mexican rock band. Uh, the host was Leslie Grace from the Dominican Republic. John Legazamo was in the house. The cast of Blue Beetle, who I love so much. Zolo and the whole crew was there. Um, and it was really, really special for me to be a part of the 36th Annual Hispanic Heritage Awards simply because they looked at the ones that came before that opened the doors and they honored my father. So kudos to our friends over at the Hispanic Heritage Awards in Washington, D.C. We filmed that at the Kennedy Center. As a matter of fact, at the end of September, but it aired now and we are right in the middle of Hispanic Heritage Month. So that's why they keep repeating the uh, show. So check it out on your local PBS. Uh, go to pbs.org for your schedule. Your local station will have it. Where are you going next after Hawaii? What is the what is the plan after Hawaii? Mira, Marisol, I don't know. I'm going to hang out there for a few days afterwards. <laughs> I'm not leaving that quick. You're not getting rid of me. So um, it, uh, it's going to be special for me because I'm coming with my wife and we're going to have a nice birthday celebration for her. Uh, so we're going to spend a couple of days in Hawaii, and check out the island and enjoy ourselves. I haven't been there in so long, see some people and friends, and of course, just enjoy the whole sights and sounds of, of everything. Um, after that, I believe we head back up to the cold Northeast. And we'll be in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Then we go to Boston. We head down to Texas for a couple of shows too. Um, most of my concert dates you can see on my social media at Tito Puente Jr. on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And I do my show. Um, I run all my social media and I'm very connected with my fans. And that's something that I've learned from the Latin X kids that are mm -hmm. coming up today. I can't even call them kids, young adults, um, that they get very involved. And I love to go one-on-one -on -one with, with everybody with my social media. So if you guys come on my, um, or DM me or anything like that, it's me. It's not somebody running my page or any bots or anything like that. Um, and I just love engaging with the fans. So we'll be heading up to the cold Northeast back to the winter because winter will be starting soon. Uh, but then again, I reside in Florida, so I'm okay. <laughs> Are you going to visit any other islands while you're here? Good question. Um, I've been, you know, Oahu is so beautiful. Um, I was, I, when I was last there, I went to Waimea Bay and that was so beautiful over there. I really love enjoying the, the sands and the Pacific and the food. I'm going to take my wife to a luau. You guys got to recommend one for me. Um, I'm really looking forward to just spending some time, uh, right there. I don't want to do just the tourist thing. I want to do the cultural thing of Hawaii and be Hispanic in Hawaii. <laughs> so I think I'll have, uh, we'll go to a luau and find one with that has rice and beans. <laughs> oh yeah let's start one that would be awesome yeah yeah we don't have that now <laughs> so yeah we are the fastest growing um demographic here in hawaii so we have lots of great food choices that are going to be at the festival so we can definitely recommend some good um, places to go eat yes i'm looking forward to it the american veterans uh hall it's mm -hmm. over there it's on the other uh it's not far from uh, honolulu so actually on the other side of the bay right there are the I guess like a bay together. Um, but it's a beautiful place. I'm looking forward to celebrating with you guys. I can't wait to share the stage with Edwin uh, Ortiz and his orchestra. These guys are smoking hot band. Um, there are many other artists too that are performing as well. You guys can run them down. I know you got mariachi happening, some cultural dancers as well. There should be some merengue, some bomba plena. So it's going to be a variety of different acts and uh, uh, I hope everybody can come out and bring your dancing shoes. That's most important. Or in Hawaii, dancing chancla. <laughs> <laughs> Flip <-flops. laughs> Yeah, yeah. Flip flops all the way. <laughs> no, we call them slippers. The slippers. <laughs> right, right. No, they call them, what do they call them? Slip ups? The yeah, slippers. slippers. <laughs> all the slippers. All right, we call them slides. Yeah. <laughs> I like chancla. Yeah. My, my kids know the duck from the chancla. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, good, good. The chancla is the one we throw at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. Awesome. It's been so great talking to you. Um, anything else you want to talk about, Mari? 
Yeah, I'm actually, I mean, kind of going back, I'm always fascinated at the, the, the upbringing, the childhood. Like, I know that you were exposed to it. And I, I just, I, I want to circle back to it. When did you feel or did you know, like, this is what you wanted to do? Because, you know, you're following in, in dad's footsteps and those are some big shoes to fill, right? Like, when did you, when did you know or make that determination? Can you share a little bit about that? I can tell you uh, two things. It's a two, two, two part uh, question there. Uh, I re recognize, because I don't really, I didn't really care for mambo music growing up. I like rock music. I'm into heavy stuff. Metallica, Iron Maiden, Slayer, Phil Collins. I'm into heavy things. No way! Yeah, I love rock music. I'm a Thanks. rock drummer. That's so awesome. that's my favorite type of music. So mambo music was just like, no, I don't want to go to your concert, Dad. So I would <laughs> fall asleep backstage. And I realized how popular he was when I went to go, well, my sister, she went to go see a group called Menudo, which was very, very popular back in the 80s with Ricky Martin and Robbie Rosa. And that's when I realized how popular Tito Puente was because Menudo wanted to be Tito Puente. And, um, and then traveling with my father, realizing how popular he was. After his passing in 2000, it took me about a good year and a half, maybe two years, to build up the courage to start playing Latin dance music. I, was, I had a career prior to my father's passing throughout the 90s by doing house music with elements of, they call it today, Afro beats. But back then we called it Latin house music. And I was performing with Proyecto Uno, Los Ilegales, Sandy Papo. Back then the reggaeton artists were like Tego Calderon, Vico C, B Big Boy, um, DJ Playero. Those were the popular ones at that time. Lisa M, another popular reggaetonera. Um, so I was doing, I was dabbling in the Latin dance and reggaeton world and adding the elements of my father's rhythms and Afro-Cuban rhythms. And then when he passed away, uh, the blessing came from my mother, Margie, and my sister and my brother. Uh, they both, my brother Ronnie and my sister Audrey, they said, why don't you continue your father's uh, band? And that's when I started uh, learning a little bit more about 3-2 clave, cha-cha, cha-cha, cha. Learned that and the Afro-Cuban rhythms. And um, I started picking up the drums and instead of moving over from the drum set, I moved over to, to the timbales and the conga and I uh, just honed in on it. My first album came out in 2003. So I'm celebrating my 20th year performing Tito Puente music. And I put out three records that are all salsa, but uh, my career expands more than the 20 years that I've been playing Tito Puente music. But I can tell you now, uh, I've come to terms of who I am. I'm 52 years old now. I've embraced uh, who I am. When you come to my concerts, you maybe you might see an image of my father simply because I look like him without the white hair and all that. However, um, when you come to the concert, you're coming for the, for the nostalgic, the nostalgic mm -hmm. feeling of salsa, Afro-Cuban music. I also teach you about clave and the history of Afro-Cuban music with Celia. And I mentioned Celia, Fania, Eddie Palmieri, Charlie Palmieri. I, I, I try to teach the new generation about this music and now I'm a vehicle and a vessel for my father's legacy for the new generation. Um, so when you come to the shows, that's what you'll experience. And you'll experience that this Sunday. Um, but yes, they are big shoes to fill. But I think I've come to terms where I'm at now that I'm a grandparent and a father, that I've embraced who I am. And I'm pretty sure that uh, my, my family has enough pressure knowing that they're related to, to the king of Latin music. I'm not the prince. <laughs> at all whatsoever. But I um, I do embrace who I am and I, I love the fact that I can be that tool uh, or that vehicle for my father's music to go to the next generation. Um, you know, I'm not the greatest player in the world and I'm not, I never said I was, or I never probably could emulate or, or replicate Tito Puente because he was so incredibly talented. What I do is I honor him the best way I can as his son. Yeah, you're keeping his legacy alive, right? I mean, it's amazing. So thank you for that. It's uh, it's exciting to have you Muchas here. Gracias. Yeah. Gracias. Yeah, and, and you know, you're one of your five children. They have big shoes to fill as well. So yeah, and I named one of them Tito Puente Junior Junior. There you go. So wow, <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got some pressure. But you know what? I think uh, I I thought I did when I was growing up too. I had to find my way, and I'm glad mm -hmm. that I'm where I'm at today. And I think he'll do the same. 
you know, uh, I think he'll probably get into his grandfather's music or some sort of aspect. Remember, Tito Puente wasn't just a musician. It's a whole brand. We have we had a restaurant, movies, television series and things like that nature. So we're doing documentaries now on Tito Puente. A biopic is in the works. Um, there's so many other aspects to the whole Tito Puente estate as we present my father's stuff in a museum with exhibitions exhibits and things like that, like they're doing for Celia Cruz. We have so many more um, uh, hurdles to cross to make sure that Tito Puente's name and his spirit and his legacy uh, continue on for the new generation. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tito Puente Jr. And, you know, it's, we can't wait to welcome you to, to the islands. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not doing the hard thing, man. I should be doing this. Aloha. Aloha to my friends. In Hawaii, my wife and I are so excited to go. We're tired of the rain here. <laughs> we want to get yeah. there. We're like, uh, we, we're performing a couple of more shows here in Washington. I'm going out to Yakima and then in Spokane uh, the next couple of days. So to more concerts. But uh, trust me, we are dying to get over there. And we can't wait to celebrate with you guys this Sunday or Saturday and Sunday at the, what is it? I think it's the 15th annual, right? Uh, 31st. 36. I'm sorry. I was way off. Yeah. Yeah. 36, right? Well, you haven't been out here in 15 years since 2008, but yeah. Right. That's why I'm getting the 15 from. Okay. So you guys saw me 36 annual. 31st annual, I believe. Yeah. 31st. Um, uh, uh, heritage uh, festival. And that's I'm right. so glad I'm going to celebrate this anniversary with you guys. Yes. And we're that's celebrating the hundredth anniversary of your father. So thank yes. you so much for joining us. Um, Muchas gracias, familia. Te quiero mucho. Que viva Tito Puente. We'll see you this weekend. Uh, yeah, this thank you. This, and this is Hola y Aloha on Think Tech. Thank you to my co-host, Marisol Ruiz. Uh, and we've been talking today with Tito Puente Jr. Thank you to our viewers for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Barbara DeLuca. Mm -hmm.